All right, so the first one, Thermo 14, I was working on the problem and wondered if maybe a different formula should be used. The highlighted formula is for water at 68. At least that's what it says in the reference manual. The fluid in the problem is fuel oil with a specific gravity of 0.86. Shouldn't we use this formula instead? And the formula instead is this guy. So the question is, shouldn't we be using this as opposed to this from my solution? Um, great question. So these are compatible. Um, and the reason why we would use this instead, using the one that has the delta H and specific gravity, is to correct for the height of a water column. So I want to talk about the specific problem so we don't get caught in talking about generalities. So this is 1314. So this problem has a couple of things going on. You have uh, a pressure gauge on the suction side of the pump on the inlet, but then on the discharge side, the gauge is some distance away and 10 feet above the pump. So let's draw what that might look like. So we've got the one gauge on the suction side, let's call that P1. And then on the discharge side, it's some distance away at some high elevation of 10 feet. And that's where the gauge is. Call that P2. So the, the um, pressure that has to be added by the pump is always going to be the difference between the discharge and the suction. But in this case, we don't know. We know that the suction pressure and P1 are the same thing because this gauge is right at the inlet. So we can say that the suction pressure is the same thing as P1. But we don't know the discharge pressure because there's no gauge right there. And it's way down here. And there's a height change. And the fluid isn't even water. So there's these other complexities that we have to deal with. So how are we going to define the discharge pressure? And this goes back to a related question, which we talk about often, which is the distinction between local measure measurements and extents. So in this case, we're defining the discharge pressure as being at, the, at some extent where it's going to be whatever's read by the gauge, P2, plus the height, which is going to be like uh, some rho G Z term if we're working in uh, PSI. We have to align the units of these. And um, we probably would agree that we'll just neglect the velocity. So the specific gravity comes into play when we're dealing with the density, because the density of, um, if there's some specific gravity that's not one, then the specific gravity means that the density of, in this case, fuel is going to be only a fraction of the density of water. And the long and short of it without doing this whole problem, you have the written solution there, is that when you're working in PSI, you have to align the units of these, align the units of these terms. So let's suppose you decided, I want to work in PSI. I've got PSI at this gauge. I've got PSI at this gauge. And I just want to stay in PSI. So when I calculate this term, I'm going to do rho GH, but it's got to be the rho of fuel, which accounts for the specific gravity. So that what I ultimately get out of this term has to be PSI. Then, I, then and only then can I add to P2 and get the discharge pressure. and um, and, and ultimately, you'll get the delta P and PSI. When you do that, you're allowed to use the formula WHP equals Q in GPM times delta P in PSI over 1714. That formula, and that's the formula that I used in my solution here. So regardless of what fluid you have flowing the pipe, you can always use this formula. It doesn't have to be water, uh, but you have to know the delta P across the pump in PSI. 
And I, I'm so uh, <laughs> obsessive about this that I actually write the units, PSI, as I'm writing the formula because I don't want to get caught in a situation where um, I'm using a different set of units. So it doesn't have to be water, but it does have to be GPM and PSI, and then this formula will fly. If, on the other hand, you want to use the other formula, which you're certainly uh, is not wrong, then you have to account for the specific gravity. So that other formula, and I think the other formula that he showed went straight to BHP. So this is also valid. The only difference between BHP and uh, WHP is that the efficiency is included. So I could just uh, as, uh, it'd be just as correct to say WHP equals GPM delta H SG over 3960 and exclude the efficiency. So just for symmetry, I'll write that this is equal. And now it's going to be GPM, which is the same as Q, right? It's volume flow rate. But now it's delta H. And because delta H is the head added by the pump in feet, feet of what? Feet of a column of a fluid that may not be water. So then we have to include the specific gravity to account for the fact that that fluid may not be water. If the fluid's water, the specific gravity is one, and that just goes away, and we're right back to just having this formula. And by the way, what's the difference between 3960 and 1714 for those who are paying close attention? This is a factor of, uh, well, actually, it would be dividing by 2.31, which is our convenient little rule of thumb for going from PSI to feet when it comes to pressure. So that, that shouldn't be um, surprising after you've done enough of these problems. So I hope that answered the question. Shouldn't we use this formula instead? I want you to be so comfortable with both of these formulas that you could do the problem either way. And for this problem, uh, because it had a mix of both, where it had gauges reading PSI, and then it had a column that was in feet, I was compelled to change the feet into PSI, do everything in PSI, and get to this. That's my personal preference. If you prefer to use this guy instead, then uh, you're welcome to. You'll actually have to convert PSI to feet of fuel to do that. But if you do it right, it'll work. So up to you.